Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really exciting video and review on a range of fragrances that I absolutely adore. Probably, if not my favorite collection of all time, then top three for sure. And this is the Insolence collection. So I have three and some of you have requested that I do kind of a video reviewing them um, because I'm such a huge violet lover, kind of talking through the differences of the three versions that I own and doing a little bit of a comparison as well. And so I've been playing with the versions that I've had. I've had the Eau de Toilette for a very long time and I'm very familiar with it and the Eau de Parfum and the Eau Glacé are um, ones, or the, the Insolence Eau Glacé are ones that I've had. Uh, for less amount of time. So now that I've really worn them all and have a lot to share with you guys, I will get into the review and near the end I will talk about the three that I don't own as well. As always, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe. It definitely helps out my channel. Some of you have actually asked about an Instagram. I don't currently have an Instagram, but hopefully if we can all, everyone who's watching, a subscribe and once I get to I think a thousand uh, subscribers hopefully I can hit that and I will open up an Instagram and share some more with you guys on there if you guys are interested so let's get into it the first one I'll start with actually is actually the Eau de Toilette I'll go in the order that I've uh, had them for how long I've had them and I will say for all three I've also sprayed them a while ago on these little strips so that I could refer back to them because now you know they've they developed a little bit you get more of that heart and dry down but I'll spray them on my arm so you have the opening and both so I can really really speak to everything so the first one again the eau de toilette and in general I'm going to talk about the eau de toilette and the eau de parfum kind of more together and then the eau glacé uh, as a third because there's a lot more similarities with the eau de toilette and eau de parfum and the first one as I say the eau de toilette is very much a sweet sweet candied violet to the max it's very sugary I'll spray it on my arm here as I say and then I have the strip as well for a little more of that dry down yeah, it's very, it opens up very sweet. Uh, there, there's red berries in the opening. It's very, I don't know, sugary. And you definitely get that violet even in the opening. But the opening of the Eau de Toilette is incredibly pink smelling, if I could describe it in any way. It's very much like pink and red fruits, um, sugary, sweet, and you get that violet, that candy, candy violet. So the best way I can describe the violet in Insolence because not everyone has had candied violets themselves. If you've ever had them on desserts, they're delicious. I love that. But um, those candy violets um, or those candies that are t that taste like violets, Chowards, I believe, is the brand for the British English ones. And then Violetas are the ones that are in Spain. But they're, they're in a number of European countries. They very much smell like those. And they, of course, smell like actual candied violets as well. It isn't just like a, it isn't a, you know, an especially floral violet. Uh, it isn't an authentic violet, you know, right um, as if you'd picked them, you know, fresh. And it's definitely powdery, but it's a sweet powdery. So if you don't like sickly, sickly sweet um, sugared fragrances or powdery fragrances, this is not the range for you. And probably also because of those two things, it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I think some of you were surprised that it wasn't in my uh, three scents that smell like me. And honestly, I was kind of surprised too. But for me, Insolence is kind of like my dream fragrance. It has everything. Before I'd even smelled it, I knew because I loved candied violets and the candy uh, violet candies that I just loved that smell. I love that taste. I love everything about it that if I find a fragrance that could encapsulate that, that would be kind of my dream fragrance. It's not one that I feel like smells like me or really meshes into my skin um, to become more of like my skin scent. It is a, it's a scent all of its own, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I, I love this. The Eau de Toilette is stunning. It's the one I've had the most. 
um, out of all of these three and that is why really I decided to get the Eau de Parfum. And the one thing I'll mention is I have them in the newer bottles, these two, so they're both in the B bottles and everything about them is the same, the exact same bottle except for the juice itself. So the Eau de Toilette is more of a light pink and the Eau de Parfum is obviously like a light purple lilac lavendery color in the juice. And obviously this says Eau de Toilette and this is Eau de Parfum, but otherwise they're completely the same. And the juice I had read off of so many websites and many reviews that most people said, wow, like there's such a big difference. Like this is so candied. This is much more like a wall of violets. This is a lot uh, more sweet and girly. This is a lot more powdery. And I was expecting, honestly, a much bigger difference between the two than personally I had and this is why I did want to make this review but it might be I don't know who it's going to be helpful for because maybe you'll have an experience like me and I just want to put that out there because the reviews that I've seen personally did not match with how I uh, or my skin interacted with these fragrances they were a lot closer than everyone had made it up to be and I think with you know fragrances and flankers and how different houses decide to approach that. Sometimes the difference between eau de, an eau de toilette and an eau de parfum is just the concentration of the perfume oils, which makes sense because that's pretty much essentially what the difference should be um, if you're looking at it very logically because the concentration of eau de toilette, a parfum, or an eau de parfum, whatever it may be, is really just about distinguishing how much perfume oil is in a fragrance. However, there are definitely lines that then change up the top or the base notes and keep some of the original DNA but then change it up enough that you see some of a difference and you can prefer one concentration to the other because the formulation of notes is different and then others just will make a flanker that is so so different from the original that it almost confuses consumers of why they're even called the same. So every house has its own uh, different take and for me personally they are very, very similar. The one thing I'll mention is because I really wanted to give it a fair shot, I tried these out many, many days and I also did nighttime tests where I would spray one in each arm, go to sleep and see kind of what the difference was. I tried to check in like a mad woman every hour to really, really boil it down. And the true honest opinion that I have is that you don't need both. I don't regret having both because I love this fragrance and it just basically means that I have, you know, 100 mils of insolence instead of, you know, just 50, but they are very similar. After much, much testing, I can say that Insolence Eau de Parfum does have two, I don't know, of the most distinct differences that I can pick out. The first one being that Insolence Eau de Parfum is more powdery than Insolence Eau de Toilette. They are both powdery fragrances, no doubt. However, if I had to give one the upper hand, I would say that Insolence Eau de, Eau de Parfum definitely has more of an actual powderedness to it than the Eau de, Eau de Toilette. The more prominent difference that you notice right at the start is that the Eau de Toilette is actually a lot sweeter. In its opening, it opens up being very much reliant on those red fruits. Um, it's pinker. If I had to describe it in any way, it's a lot, it's more youthful because of that. It's sweeter because of that. It's, it's, yeah, it's more candied because it has those like, fr that fruity opening that that really just keeps it sweeter and lighter and more in your face um, with everything that Insolence is, whereas Insolence Eau de Parfum tones that down just a bit. In terms of the red fruits, that's toned down. It doesn't open as sickly sweet that it hurts your teeth the way the Eau de Toilette does. The Eau de Parfum does a better job of starting I don't know, maybe starting where the Eau de Toilette is, maybe half an hour into the wear. So then when you're getting into the heart, I find the heart 
pretty similar between both, honestly. So once they, you know, once that really sickly sweet opening difference between the two dries down, the heart for me is very, very similar. Again, maybe it's just my nose, maybe it's just on my skin. But after the opening, I feel like the heart is pretty similar. And then the dry down, what I noticed is in my sleep tests where I would try them and put them on and then go to sleep and wake up, the eau de toilette arm had completely worn off and I couldn't smell anything other than my skin. But the eau de parfum arm had like a slight, I don't know, like tonka bean sweetness to the area of my skin that I'd smelled it. Now, of course, the Eau de Parfum has a, a much more of that perfume oil and it has a higher concentration of that perfume oil, so that's not surprising uh, that it would last longer. And I think the dry down is just, you get more of that really beautiful powdery, and I love the dry down of this, you get more time of that on your skin with the Eau de Parfum. However, I will say, in terms of performance, sillage, lasting power, Overall, both of these fragrances, both the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum, perform at an Eau de Parfum level. This is an Eau de Toilette that is incredibly strong, has amazing sillage, will last if you spray it in a room, the room will smell like it. If you don't like this fragrance, that definitely can be annoying, and I know that this fragrance isn't for everyone, but if you love it the way I do, that's a really, really nice thing to have, that even the Eau de Toilette performs like the Eau de Parfum, in how strong it is. Honestly, the opening of this is even a little stronger than this because it's even sweeter. However, the dry down and when you start to look at the amount of hours that it lasts on your skin, the Eau de Parfum, you know, slightly overperforms there and that really is just because it honestly does have uh, more of those perfume oils and on, on my skin, I did notice that. When I would wake up, this was still on my skin in its very light dry down, whereas this had completely worn off. Again, I find them pretty similar. They're not incredibly different. To my nose, they're very, very similar. And obviously there's like one or two things that I mentioned that exist, but I wouldn't continue to purchase both consistently. Once I were to finish both of these, I think I would just, because they're so similar and the differences between them aren't so much that I just adore to have the Eau de Toilette over the Eau de Parfum, I think I will just continue purchasing only the Eau de Parfum simply because it lasts just a bit longer. It's only really lacking that super sickly opening and if I ever miss that, I could you know, pick this up um, one year, but if I'm gonna continue purchasing a Solence, I am gonna stick with the Eau de Parfum personally, but I don't regret having both. And that again is just my personal experience with this fragrance and how I felt about really comparing the two alongside each other. So then we move on to the third fragrance in the Aisolence range, and it's the one I've had for the least amount of time. It's the newest one to join my collection, and I've been so excited for you guys to kind of see my review of this, because obviously you saw me opening it up and do a first impressions, and that, of course, is the Aisolence Eau Glacée, and this is in the original packaging. So this is what all the Insolence used to look like. I unfortunately never owned it at that time. I should have purchased it, but I didn't. And so I'm really glad to have picked this up. This is one, honestly, all the other flankers, other than the, just the Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum, I never thought I'd be able to get my hands on because so many people like them. I know a lot of people don't like them, but there are definitely a lot of people who like them. And yeah, they, they just aren't, around that much. So I was so happy to at least get one of them. And this is the Eau, de Eau Glacé. So what this one really has is it's supposed to be more of like an icy, colder, lighter, and more citrusy version of the originals. So this does list and it does have some citrusy notes in the opening and it's, you know, in this clear bottle and it's supposed to be colder of that candied violet than we saw in the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. And again, I have the opening here and I have the heart dry down on this little slip. And it definitely, definitely matches it description. That description is perfect. It does smell iced. It smells as though the candied violets that you'd made were left out and have kind of like a soft layer of frost around them. 
it smells icy, it smells citrusy, but the citrus isn't strong and it, it, you can't really pick it up as if it's, you know, super lemony or mandarin or orange. It's just adding to that iciness to, of it, that coldness to it. Whereas if I smell the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum, they are both warmer to the nose. They have that candied violet, but it's warmer, it's sweeter, and this is way less sweet. It does not have that huge concentration of red fruits and extremely candied florals and fruits. This is lighter, citrusier, icier, colder, and less sweet. And I love it. I feel like this is a lot more, even though it's like the eau glacée or the iced version of Insolence, this I think is a nicer fragrance to wear actually in, in higher heat or in the summer or spring because while I think Insolence is a year-round fragrance, because it's so strong and candied and projects a lot, there are definitely people that only like to wear it in colder weather. And I can see that and I can understand that. That's just my personal taste, but I can definitely see and respect that. So this is a lot icier and softer and lighter and of course more citrusy version that I think does beautiful for this time of year. It does a lot better in hotter weather. That very little citrus, however small it might be, and the toned down in the extreme sweetness helps to make it better and easier to wear basically when it's hotter and you're sweating and you don't want to perhaps be kind of like engulfed in sweet candy violets. So I definitely like this. I'm so happy to have picked it up even though I think of the three, if they were all equally available and always available and this was an incredibly hard to find and had that like bias of specialness to it, I don't think this is the one I would pick up. I still think out of the three, I would have continued to purchase the Eau de Parfum. Personally, I do want it to be candied and that original, what Insolence is. However, the, the Eau Glacé does have the added benefit of being much more of like a true flanker in that there is some of that original DNA, but they did something fun and innovative with it. And I'm so happy to have it part of my collection. I did m mention at the start that I don't own the three other like main flankers, Insolence, Blooming, um, My Insolence, and the Extra, Insolence Extra. And I have, you know, searched far and wide. I've never personally been able to find them. I would love to own them one day, but I'm also being more realistic that I probably won't be able to find them. And if I ever do, I don't know, find them somewhere or if someone gives me or I can buy even a sample or a decant, then I will definitely update you guys. I'd love to have at least tried them. Um, you know, the ultimate dream would be to own them, but I'd love to at least be able to try them one day so I could kind of have an idea of how this entire range looked because for me as a violet lover, a candied violet is kind of like the extreme of what violet can be and I love it and Insolence by Guerlain as a range just really did a beautiful job of bringing that to the forefront. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful in some way and that helped you to kind of decide which way to lean and perhaps, you know, if you do want to try it out or if you've already tried it out, which one you want to try out next or if you're just going to pass and stick to one fragrance. And yeah, don't forget to comment below and let me know what you think and other Guerlain fragrances you like. I'd love to hear from you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.